This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to talk about alpha end tuning, ITB or independent throttle bodies, and ITB mode setup. This is a typical ITB setup, which stands for independent throttle bodies. You can see the ITBs at the bottom, just below the orange couplers. At the very bottom of your screen is the air filter. In this case, it's probably a foam air filter. Independent throttle bodies are very popular in the motorcycles from, from Japan, Kawasaki's, Honda's, Yamaha's. They are virtually always used for these high performance motors. And we will get into why this is. This is a side view from a different motor, just as it's being mocked up to go into a race car chassis. You can see the air filters on the left, the ITB throttle bodies in the middle with the fuel rail coming in from the top, the home built intake manifold is on the right. You can see where I took a stock intake manifold, cut it off in the bridge port, and welded in four aluminum tubes to mount the ITBs. Notice that the ITBs are rubber mounted. and We'll get into later why I do this. This is a typical ITB setup off of a motorcycle. This happens to be the engine side. At the top, you see the fuel rails and the four brown injectors. The hose across the front, it's uh, about a quarter inch hose maybe, that is where the map signal is sampled by the ECU. You can see that we bridge all four independent throttle bodies to get one map signal back to the ECU. This is the other side of the ITBs. You will see a second set of throttles very commonly in the motorcycle world. What that is, is a set of throttles used to limit horsepower in the lower gears often used for traction control or wheelie control. On the left, you see the actuator motor or the stepper motor that controls those. This is the in view of the same set of ITBs. Notice that there's actually two sets of injectors. The brown ones that are used for low power. On the right side are the gray set. That's used for full throttle. They're upstream of the throttle bodies that controls the traction control. On the right side right here is the throttle position sensor used for the secondary throttles. And this is the TPS or throttle position sensor used for the main set of throttles that control the motor most of the time. At the top, you'll see the two fuel rails, one for the primary injectors, one for the secondary injectors. So this is our standard engine. What I've got in yellow are the primary sensors used for ITB tuning. They are the barrow sensor on the upper left, the TPS used for high power tuning, the MAP sensor, or manifold air pressure, manifold absolute pressure, and the manifold air temperature sensor. At the bottom is the crankshaft position sensor, and in the center of your screen is the coolant sensor used for warm up. Notice in the top right, I've got a note, speed density is used below about 90 kPa, and alpha end tuning is used above 90 kPa. Speed density is using the manifold air pressure and manifold air temperature to basically calculate the density of the air in the intake. and Alpha end tuning is when you use the throttle position sensor and the engine RPM to estimate the fueling requirements of the motor. So what I've done now is zoomed in and notice the red arrow in the middle of the intake manifold. What that is is the tuned length of the intake when the motor is running at very low throttle. What's going on here? is a motor is essentially a pipe organ. And if you look in the internet, Google pipe organ theory, and what you'll find out is there's closed end pipe organs and open end pipe organs. 
when the motor is at low throttle, the resonant length of the intake is essentially from the back side of the throttle plates to the bottom of the intake valve. Now let's look at the tune link when the throttle plates are fully open. We are now working as an open-in pipe organ. This is the primary reason why an ITB motor behaves very differently than any other motor. If I open Megalog Viewer HD and I go to Calculated Fields, Optional Fields of the first screen is Map Times RPM. If you turn that on and you will get a pop-up that it wants to reload the software, go ahead and do that. What we get, if we open in histogram view of a normal motor, you will notice on the right side, right in this area, how you get a very gradual change from blue, low volumetric efficiencies, up to about 110 volumetric efficiency with a very gradual change in colors. This is very typical of a motor that wants to be tuned in speed density. ITB tuning is just not required in this sort of motor. This motor would be just like 99% of the motors out there. If we open up the same motor in scatter plot view, what you will see is I've got plotted along the bottom, RPM, manifold air pressure up the left side, and volumetric efficiency out in the field in color. In that same motor, you can see a very gradual gradient from our change in colors from blues in the lower left up to a bright orange or red in the top right corner. On the right side, I've plotted map times RPM versus duty cycle and volumetric efficiency in the color. Notice the color is the same on both sides. And on the right plot, you have a relatively straight line where any given map times RPM gives you a very distinct duty cycle. In the center, we have something going on here, which is this intake manifold has some sort of resonance going on that means we have a change in fueling over a short period of time. But for the most part, any given RPM and map will give you a duty cycle. Now what I've done is taken a motor that is an ITB motor. This motor has a huge variation as you come up through the manifold air pressure. This is again histogram view, which is done with Megalog or HD. It does take the registered version, but if you notice, we're running 60% duty cycles all the way up the right side, and then all of a sudden we get to these huge numbers. Look through the meat of the, the tune. At 6,500 RPM, we get that same effect. We have a relatively gradual rise in volumetric efficiency, and then all of a sudden we get this cliff of volumetric efficiency. A motor like that will be very difficult to tune in speed density and is going to take ITB mode or TPS-based tuning to tune it in. If we look in scatter plot view, it even becomes more apparent. Notice how I have a fairly gradual change in color, and then all of a sudden at the full throttle area, I get a huge jump in volumetric efficiency. If I plot map times RPM versus duty cycle and volumetric efficiency, again, the colors are the same on both sides. Look how I get a huge increase. I no longer have that straight line function that I had on the other motor. You get a huge increase in the amount of fuel this motor wants as the throttle position comes greater and greater. This is the signature of an ITB motor, and when you try to tune it in speed density, it gets almost impossible to do a great tune on it. So now, I'm gonna give an example of how to set all this up called ITB mode in the Megasquirt world. If you go to basic load settings and then hit general settings, 
the next thing that pops up is a screen that normally in the top right corner you would be set to speed density. I'm going to hit the the tag down box and come down to ITB. Once you do that, a new option comes up under basic load settings. It's no longer grayed out called ITB load settings. The first thing we need to notice is down at the bottom right corner, notes one, two, three, and four. They are very important. What I want to do is validate that the throttle position sensor, map sensor, and barrel sensor reads correctly for your setup. Number two, and you have to set these in this order, is set the percent barrel switch point. That is the 90 on the left. Configure the left curve from data logs, and we'll show you that in a minute. And on the right side, by default, leave that plot alone. I can show you later what that's doing. So now let's set up this graph on the upper left corner. Notice that we're actually percent barrel. I'm going to make the assumptions that you're somewhere near sea level and percent barrel 90 means 90 kPa. What I want to do is go into open mega log viewer and what we need is a very big log coming off your motor, not somebody else's, off of your motor that we can write a filter against. What I'm going to do is create by going to new data filter and type in barrel switch curve. This one's already been set up, so I'm in edit mode at this point. And I'm going to write the formula, open brackets, map, close square bracket, is greater than 92, or map is less than 88. Basically what that does is throws out all data where the manifold air pressure is greater than 92, and the map is less than 88. So all we get are the numbers around 90 kPa. I also want to throw out in the Megasquirt world, engine greater than one. Basically, the motor is running a relatively steady state. So if I apply that filter and open up the histogram view, what I get is at 2,000 RPM, it takes about 12% you know, throttle. Notice, by the way, that I have a very tight pattern on TPS opening up to 100% throttle. Notice how these are spread fairly wide. I'm jumping by 15% throttle settings in the upper left. And at the bottom, I'm jumping by 1 and 2% throttle. In the field, what we're looking at is the average of the data that came up after we applied our filter. And you can see that at relatively high RPM, 6,000 and above, it takes about 30% throttle to get to 90 kPa. In the mid-range, say 4,000 RPM, it takes around 20% throttle. And at 2,000 RPM, you can get to 90 kPa at 15% throttle. Let's apply this to our plot on the upper left. What I've done, you can't get to this screenshot normally um, with your computer. What I did is cut and paste. But I have my curve that we developed at the bottom. On the upper left corner, I've set a fairly smooth curve that's using the same numbers. If you look up around 5,000 RPM, I've got it set right here to about 35. Do your best to get the two curves to essentially be the same. On the right side, I've left that plot as the default. If you notice, it's set to 50% across the board. What this means is that this RPM, about 50% of your tune cells in Tuner Studio will be dedicated to speed density on the bottom, and about 50% of your cells above the switch point will be dedicated to alpha end mode. This happens to be the setup I use on my motor. Uh, my motor is a dedicated race car. So what I do is at low RPM, in this area of the plot, I'm using about 80% of my cells to tune speed density. But once I get on track, I use about 80% of my cells to tune the alpha end section. Note that if you do this, trick, 
it will become a little difficult to get a smooth transition from speed density up into ITB mode. So we normally advise to not take this option. What I want to point out, this is our air filter side of the ITBs. And notice how the factory has made this a very solid assembly. From left to right, it's all bolted together in aluminum. ITBs are very critical to sinking of all four throttles coming open at the same time. One of the problems I see in ITB setups is on the V8 installs. What happens is you have this big aluminum intake manifold sitting on a motor that this thing wants to essentially change size as the aluminum expands with heat. The throttle assembly has difficulty having exactly the same angle as the motor warms up. What we end up with is extreme tunability issues. You just can't get all eight throttles to be at exactly the same manifold air pressure at very slight throttle positions. As the motor comes up on the power, the difference between 80% throttle and 85% throttle is just not that sensitive. But boy, at the bottom end, it is a fight to get these motors. You can get it to idle fairly well and run fairly well when the motor's cold, but things just change as the motor warms up. But it is an absolutely beautiful setup. You'll also notice in the bottom right corner, this really is a early Corvette barn find still running a generator. The EFI is all hidden underneath this thing, so it still looks vintage, but it is running an MS3. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD that we're using to generate all these plots, and the guys that write Tuner Studio, the software we use to tune these motors, the guys at DIY AutoTune that supply all the parts and pieces we use to wire these cars, plus the AMP EFI series of ECUs, and MSExtra.com. Thank you for watching.